Cities across the country are beginning to move into phase one of dystopia. We're seeing failures across the board when it comes to our urban areas. And if you live in a city right now, SHTF is already here. You're already experiencing it and you're going to see yourself living in a place that is going to become more and more dystopian as time goes by. So stick around for the rest of the video. We'll talk about why the cities in our country are starting to move into phase one of dystopia and what we can expect as SHTF preppers in some of the aftermath of what's happening to these major American cities. Hey everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and today we're gonna to talk about how our major American cities are moving into the first stages of being a dystopia. We're seeing a lot of failures throughout all of our urban areas across the country, and it's starting to move into a situation that might not be able to be recovered from. There's a lot of things that have happened in the previous year that have turned our cities into a place that people don't wanna be in any longer and have become hostile for the people who are left over. And there's really not an easy way back from this situation. So you can expect it to escalate into more and more of a dystopian style society as we see things progress the way they are now. So what I wanna talk about in this video is what has caused a lot of what we're seeing right now when it comes to the major American cities and what we can expect afterward in the sense of being SHGF preppers, even if you don't live in the city, especially if you live in the suburbs. So what cities are we talking about? Well, if you're in any of the following cities, Minneapolis, Seattle, New York City, Portland, if you're in maybe even Atlanta, Chicago, a lot of these cities are starting to look like something out of a movie. And no, this isn't Demolition Man, and it's not RoboCop. These cities are actually dystopic right now in the way that they appear, as in businesses are shut down, everything's boarded up, there's homeless people everywhere you look and desperation everywhere you turn. And it's starting to emulate something out of a science fiction novel, which is not something that we usually expect to actually see happen, but right now it seems like we're in the beginning stages of that kind of a situation. And really quickly, if you are preparing for SHTF and maybe you live in one of those major cities and you're trying to figure out what you're gonna do next, hit the subscribe button below so that way we can keep talking about what's happening right now and how it might apply to the future so that way as many of us can try to survive this onslaught of ridiculousness that 2020 has become. So, the first thing that has really caused what's happening in the American cities isn't necessarily the pandemic, even though it's the easiest thing to point a finger at. And yes, the implications of the pandemic have brought the cities to their knees. However, it's the persisting civil unrest in all of these major metropolitan areas that has continually beat down those cities into a point of submission where they're no longer able to operate as the thriving metropolises that they used to be. A big part of what keeps a city's economy moving is traffic and the traffic of the citizens, the traffic of the tourism, the traffic of people throughout and about the city to spend money on subway fares, to spend money at restaurants, to spend money at retail stores, to spend money continuously, continuously is what we expect when it comes to keeping an economy moving in a major city. And all of that has been brought to a halt. Now, yes, a lot of that started during the pandemic and the lockdowns and everything else related to that, but the civil unrest that continues is what's really making these business owners have to make tough decisions about whether or not they can actually remain in a operational form of business. These businesses are boarded up, they're closed indefinitely, they aren't paying their rent, they aren't paying their employees. There's a million reasons why a business in those areas right now might not be able to reopen, but the civil unrest and the rioting and the looting that has happened has caused them to realize that it might be too risky to reopen. Without the pandemic even in mind, it's the unrest that is keeping these business owners at bay because they don't want their business to be next when it comes to being burnt down or looted or gutted or anything that we have seen in the past. So the instability and the safety of these 
businesses is being put paramount above anything else because it's a business. They have to rely on their capital in order to survive the current economic conditions. And these businesses have been forced to basically become shelters during a hurricane. If you ask me, when you look at all the plywood on the windows and you look at the security measures that are being taken, it looks like something you expect from Key West, Florida, when a category four is barreling down right on top of them. So this is where we're at right now. The unrest has persisted for months. And in some of these cities, it's gotten worse and worse. And now some of these businesses and the people who live near them have decided it was time to go or that they don't know if they can reopen their doors at at all. So there's a huge expense related to what has happened because of the unrest and the rioting and the looting. And cities like Minneapolis are going to have a bill of almost $500 million in order to repair the infrastructure and the buildings that were destroyed during the unrest over the past couple of months. And other cities around the country, including Chicago and Portland, are going to have millions of dollars they have to spend to reconstruct the parts of the city that have been affected the most by the situation. When you compound that with the economic impact impact of the pandemic and what it has caused economically across the world, those cities are finding it harder and harder to pay their bills. And of course, that creates a snowball effect and that makes a city less and less desirable to be in and usually correlates with things like a rise in crime, a lower quality of life, or, um, and everything else related to it, okay? So, that is what the unrest has caused. And it's why these cities are moving into a dystopian society as if they're something out of a science fiction film, okay? But there's other factors as well. And one of the main factors, and especially if you live in one of these urban environments or you live in somewhere like Southern California or if you live up in Seattle or wherever it may be, the homeless crisis is exploding. It is out of control because of the implications due to the pandemic and the amount of people who are now out of work and possibly out of a place to live because of not being able to pay their rent or pay any of their bills or whatever it was that caused them to be in the position they're in now. The homeless population is growing rapidly and we're seeing homeless camps and homeless activity all over the streets of all these major metropolitan areas. And it's starting to get to the point of causing a form of danger. It's causing a safety concern for the people who live in those areas. It's also causing a huge strain on the financial aspect of how the city is gonna take care of those people. Because places like New York City are going above and beyond due to the pandemic to try to keep these homeless people safe from getting sick. However, what they're doing is putting other people who are not homeless at risk in order to do so. And it's causing huge safety concerns because the homeless population, as though many of them are very um, desperate people who maybe weren't able to get ahead in life or had a bad hand dealt or something like that. You know, some of these people actually need the help, but many of them have issues when it comes to drugs and have um, lots of crime in their history and are, have a propensity to commit those crimes. And they're putting these people in areas with a population that's not used to their presence and doesn't know how to handle the situation and it's causing drugs and violence and crime to escalate in those areas. And New York City um, is actually putting these people into hotels. And there's 139 hotels across New York City right now that are housing homeless people in order to save them from the pandemic. And that means there's almost over 13,000 homeless people in hotels, hotels that you and I probably couldn't afford living in them right now due to the pandemic. And this is one of those situations where you can see a government takeover of private industry and a forcing of a select demographic of people to be integrated with other people who may not be able to peacefully integrate. And this is what's happening in the safety concerns and the, and the lawlessness of the homeless population is now front and center for the people who live in those areas. So when you combine the fact that businesses are boarded up, that they have been destroyed or burned or gutted from the inside out, with the fact that the homeless population is exploding in size and that the streets are covered in tents and 
fecal matter and trash and people who are unstable or maybe have a propensity to commit crime, you are starting to see the beginning stages of a dystopian society where laws are going to have to come down hard and fast and the people who are affected by them might not even be the ones who are committing the crime and that is exactly what we're starting to see the development of and it's not something that you easily fix at the snap of a finger it's something that is going to last a long time and that these cities are going to maybe never even recover from because of the actions they're taking now what they're doing now is a transmission of society it's changing everything um, about how things were supposed to operate and how they will operate now in the future due to the instability and the inherent risk of trying to bring things back to page one and the combination of those just those two factors alone is going to make it so these cities are highly undesirable for anyone to return to once things start to clear up if they ever do so the thing that we have to prepare for, and the thing that you all need to be aware of as SHGF preppers, as many of you live in rural environments or in the suburbs, or not necessarily in the heart of major metropolitan areas. And for those of you who do, I am sorry that this is something you're experiencing now, and please feel free to leave in the comments whatever it is you're seeing on the ground level or what you're witnessing in your area, so that way we can all keep an eye on what's happening. Because we all know that everything starts in the cities. Whether or not it comes to fashion trends, or whether or not it comes to SHTF, everything starts in the city. So you're going to be our warning signal for those of us who aren't there to let us know what's happening. So I appreciate you leaving comments below to let us know what's happening. But the thing we have to prepare for, for those of us who aren't in the city, is a situation of a mass exodus from these metropolitan areas. People are leaving in droves. They're leaving because they either can't afford it, because it's not worth the cost of living anymore, because they don't have a job there anymore and they had to relocate, because it's not safe for them and their families any longer to be in that area. Maybe they had a business that was burned to the ground that they can no longer rely on. There's a lot of factors that are going into why these people are leaving and they have to get out of there. And I suggest that they leave because it is a situation that is not going to just magically improve. However, we are facing what could be considered somewhat of a refugee crisis. Yes, these people are moving out of the cities, but with what resources? Does everyone have the resources to easily get up and move and just start over in a new area without having financial implications at hand? Most people don't have the kind of money, especially when you're dealing with the cost of living in those major cities, to just pick up and leave and be financially set there afterward. So we're gonna see a lot of changes in different areas, especially the suburban areas that surround the cities right now. If people are leaving in droves, they have to be going somewhere. So this is one of those situations, the run for the hill scenario, where we have always talked about, you know, well, if something happens, I'll just go bug out to a rural environment. Well, for those of us who live in the rural environment, there's not anywhere you can just come to and bug out to when we are already here. And that's something that those of us who are in that environment need to keep in mind. Because yes, a lot of these people need to leave and I suggest that they leave and I hope that they set up shop and they have a heart to heart about how things were going in the area they were before and hopefully they don't vote for policies that caused the situation they were in at that time in their new home. However, there are always the fringe elements of those who are in a refugee crisis. There's a fringe element of those who are in exodus because there's always a fringe element. No matter what group or demographic of people you talk about, there will be. So you will have the bleed over from some of the problems from those areas coming with these people. And if you want to simplify it, think of it like this. If a family of five decides that they have to leave the city and maybe they have some extended family that they bring with them, there's always a brother or a cousin or a niece or somebody who might be related to criminal activity or might be willing to do things that somebody else in that unit might not be able to do or want to do. There might be some really good nice people in that entire unit. However, there might be one wild card that could change the perception of that unit for everyone else surrounded by them. And that is something that you have to consider. If you look at what's happened in the past, um, look at cities like Oakland for say. Oakland had a large crime issue. So a lot of people decided they had to leave and go resettle an area like Richmond so that they could get out of Oakland and get away from the crime. Well, 
as you know, the crime just followed everyone to Richmond because somebody was either friends with or related to somebody who moved to Richmond and realized there was opportunity there to also commit crime. So that is something we have to be aware of and prepared for as preppers, because if these exoduses are real and people are leaving the cities in droves for all the reasons we've already talked about and for all the reasons we already know about, then we have to be prepared for a new demographic and new group of people to be in your area and to possibly bring some of their problems with them. So I want everyone here to be aware that you have to stay vigilant, keep an eye out for what's happening in your area. And just because you're not in the city doesn't mean you won't be affected by it. If you wanna watch for SHTF to start and you're looking for signals of what this long-term SHTF event we're all preparing for might be, just remember that it's probably gonna to come to you from a metropolitan area. We're gonna see it start there and it's gonna spread. And that's just how these things work. It's how everything works right now. There's no reason to think that anything would change when it comes to the spread or distribution of an SHTF scenario. So. Keep in mind, we're in, we're in phase one of dystopia in American cities. And if you can't see it, it's because it's not the easiest thing to just see on the surface. But if you start looking into what the causes of this situation are and how the rebuilding process is going to be, you can see that there's a good chance we might not come back around from this anytime soon. And in some cases, maybe even ever. And you also need to make sure that you're prepared for the inevitable exodus of these places and whatever um, problems might come with that as well. And as we've seen in places around the world where there's been a refugee crisis, there has been issues with things like assimilation um, and there has been issues with people taking advantage of those people due to their desperation. So we have to be vigilant of that. And I wanted to make everyone here aware of what's happening because what we're seeing right now in our cities is unacceptable, but it is what's happening and we have to prepare for it wisely. So if you have anything else to add about why these cities are starting to move into phase one, one of a dystopian society, leave it in the comments below. And a lot of you would already say that they were already a dystopian society before. And that's understandable for your, your opinion to feel that way. Leave that below, let me know what your thoughts are. And if you have any questions at all, give me a heads up because I'm always willing to try to interact with you all. And if I don't get to your comment, I apologize, but there tends to be a lot. So if you have anything else for me, let me know. Otherwise that's gonna be it for Magic Prep. Yeah,